Hi guys and welcome back to Bespoke Airsoft Vlog. Uh, this is vlog getting close to 40 odd I think now. Um, I just sort of update on a few things that's going on here. Uh, the barrels have been well um, received, we've been doing really well with them, we've had loads go out. We did put up a little thing on the striker page in regards to um, compatibility with the Action Army Hop Unit. Now what we're doing is um, we've noticed that some of you guys are probably going to want to update to the Action Army Hop Unit um, in some course or period with your striker. Uh, we've modelled it off the original Hop Unit, which is not a problem. It still works as, as perfectly good as it has. We've had over 200 of these barrels go out. I think it's about 230 we sold. Um, but we do realise that you may want to fit the Action Army Hop Unit, which they've elongated the hop unit so it's a little bit longer well what we're trying to do because we pride ourselves on customer service here we haven't thrown you out and gone right well you bought the barrel now um, you stuck with it so what we're actually saying is if you want to use if you've bought the short outer barrel from us um, and it's not damaged in any way oh, phone's ringing. sorry for the interruption there it's been a busy day so I haven't had a chance to come back on camera loads of people popping in to see us today which is good so yeah, I was talking about the barrel, and if you've got your barrel that we've sent to you and you want to switch it out for the one that's had the adjustments for the Action on Hop unit, we'll do that, not a problem at all, as long as it's not damaged uh, or, or battered or anything like that. So if you want to get it back to us, that's not a problem, we'll switch it out and send the other ones back out to you, uh, no charge whatsoever. So with that out of the way, um, what I wanted to talk about was something that's been on the whiteboard for a while now and we're doing this little project um, that's a little bit different really we're basically going to build something from the ground up and the reason why it's so different is because this gun's going to run on three gearboxes um, and the gearboxes that we've chose are uh, uh, M249 gearboxes so they're built for full auto they withstand a lot of uh, pressure because of the, uh, the chunk that the gearbox is so we stand uh, constant amounts of full auto, they're a very simple system, they use V2 compatible parts so we'll be using those for this gun um, so we'll be using one of these well, we'll be using three of these um, so let me switch it around so we'll be powering the gun with three 249 gearboxes and these will be able to be ran uh, at the same time independently it will be completely up to the user uh, which one they want to use so to do this these are really simple gearboxes they normally use a simple wiring loom uh, which is something like this with a fuse and then it comes with a little micro switch which is just an on and off they don't need, require the semi auto function so it doesn't need any kind of uh, cut off levers or anything like that it's very simple just on and off which is great. So we've cut off the uh, really very cheap uh, ANK wiring. We've kept the micro switches, but what we're going to actually do is we're going to have three gearboxes linked off one micro switch, so one trigger, one trigger to rule them all. <laughs> one trigger will uh, basically control all three gearboxes, but you'll be able to switch them on and off on the fly using these funky little light up switches so you'll have these on the side of the gun um, and have three in a row so the rifle won't do anything and then depending on whether you turn the one, the two or the three on will correlate to how many gearboxes are firing these gearboxes with like a uh, strong 7.4 or even 11.1 .1 lipo turn over quite quickly they put a nice right of fire out, it's nice and steady uh, it's a very simple system like I've said before however when you fire all three at the same time it's ridiculous it sounds it just sounds well it sounds a little bit retarded but uh it's it's really strange it's like you know sometimes you hear these cars with these weird engines and they don't sound quite as normal because you've not only got one gearbox firing but you've got all three and so anyway we're going to be running the gearboxes off three individual mosfets now each gearbox is going to have its own power source and the reason behind that is because it's simple, uh, it's easy to do and it's not too much trouble uh, using three batteries, one for each gearbox and if you do want to turn the gearboxes on and off 
Um, let's say, for instance, you don't want to use the three gearbox design, and you're using, you're running like a long milsim game or something. You can en en enable one or two if you put in massive amounts of fire down, uh, or you can use the gearboxes individually. And once the first gearbox or the battery on the gearbox one is is going low, you can just switch over and vice versa. And loads of capabilities. So we're going to have the wires, which are going to be redone. These are going to be pulled off. We're going to be using a more high quality wire. Those are going to be wired to the MOSFETs. The MOSFETs are going to be wired to the batteries, and then the signal wires of the MOSFETs are going to be wired to the single trigger. The signal wires from the MOSFETs to the single trigger will be on the switches, which are these, so you can enable them to turn on or off. We will also have switches to enable the power on and off, so you'll have fail safes to turn the system off if anything did go wrong. So it's going to be a great little, uh, little project we got here. This is the project we designated as Dreadnought when we first thought it up, and uh, just because it sounded devastating. So this is basically the first video. Uh, we're going to do a full video series on the process of this, um, going from you know wiring the gearboxes up to the MOSFETs, coming up with a system to clamp the three gearboxes in the same sort of um, assembly. And then we're going to go into uh, barrels, uh, hop units. I think we're going to go with um, the M4 star hop units because the nozzle length is the same. Um, so we're going to use M4 star hop units because it's going to be easy. The feeds are from the bottom. If we did go with 249 star hop units, the feeds on the side, it's going to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more difficult to do. So M4 hop units, feeds at the bottom. We're going to have an individual feed of ammo to each hop unit and then those are going to be wired in with the um, motors so as you're putting the trigger on the gun it'll also be feeding a power source through to the uh, the box magazine and be feeding up the uh, rounds into each individual hop unit uh, how we're going to do the hop units yet i don't know probably gonna to have to machine some kind of block that will sit them all in in virtue and uh probably going to stick with like something short like a 300 mil uh, in a barrel but what we're going to do we're not going to find a gun and try and fit this into it we're actually going to do it from the inside out so we're going to build the gearboxes make sure that's all nice and solid and make sure they're all square and true then we're going to move to obviously once the wire and everything's all done for that we're going to move to the hop units make sure that hop units to barrels make sure it feeds get all the mag um, all the feed tubes set up with the um, the feed mechanisms make sure this system runs flawlessly and then we're going to design something to build around it so it's going to be sort of a different type of support gun if you don't want to run um, like something silly like a minigun or something where you have to run airlines and bits and pieces and it can get a bit intensive if you're carrying all these tanks and stuff on your back there was a few key factors for this build that I wanted to keep um, true to the end one, making sure it's electric so there's no airlines or uh, separate feeds for any type of power source. Number two, it needs to be compact. It can't be too long, hence going with a 300mm uh, inner barrels. Uh, the What we'll probably find is the back of the gearboxes. It's not going to be too far back where the stock system is or something like that. And number uh, three is, uh, what did I say? Number one, electric. Number two, compact. Um, simple. We need to keep it simple and it's got to be easily maintained as well. Um, so far with the gearboxes uh, we've probably looked we've looked into getting steel plates to sit on the side here and in the side of the other gearboxes then clamping it all together and then what we're probably going to use is like some thread rod to go through the mounting holes on the gearbox just to keep it all centre and that way we can adjust it and make sure the gearboxes are sat uh, completely true to each other. So. So, welcome to Project Dreadnought, where we're doing a step-by-step -step series if you want to follow this, whether you've got your own type of build going on, whether you're doing something as silly as we are, uh, whether sites are going to allow us to um, <laughs> allow us to use this. Technically, it's just like three ge three guns in one. Um, if sites allow silly polar style builds and speed softers, then I'm sure they'll uh, allow this. We're not going to go silly with it. Um, but we're taking any... If you want to be part of this project and you want to put your... Um, ideas and points across please do it in the uh, comments down below 
if you've got any ideas on what we should model this on um, a few people that have been in the shop and saw the gearboxes inside uh, on the side and uh, had explained to them what we were doing <laughs> they've put some ideas forward from like the games like destiny and uh, there's a few guns that were threw at us from uh, infinite warfare from the call of duty series um, so there's plenty of ideas out there and we look forward to this project so i'm hoping that you will enjoy this we'll do a step by step like i say just putting you through each and each uh, individual part of the process and if you're working on something similar like this or you're working on a big project we'd love to hear about it at bespoke um we love the unusual um and we love the the hard the harder things to do it's not like grabbing an m4 off the shelf shoving a silly motor on it perhaps putting a dual sector gear and we want to go over we want to overthink it um so the three gearbox design is something i've wanted to do for a while and as far as i'm aware no one's done it yet i, I could be wrong if you want to let me know if point me in a direction to any builds that people have done because it'd be great for inspiration as well but uh if not we'll uh we'll see you in the next video and hopefully if you follow the dreadnought series it will be its own series on youtube that'll be great um for all the really more in-depth bits and pieces for you but thanks for tuning into this video and we'll see you in the next one cheers guys